Hello, you're welcome to this hands-on project. So as you can see, I've actually logged in into my AWS console. And the first service we're going to create now is Amazon S3 Bucket. So once you sign into your, um, into your account, just come here at the search bar and type S3. So once you type S3, it's going to display the service for you. So I will just go ahead and click on it. Oh, great. So as you can see, um, create bucket. I'll just click on this. All right. So um, as you know, AWS S3 is a global service. So that means whenever you want to create your bucket, you need to choose a unique name. But in this case, we'll be using the domain name. OK, so let me say this. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction class, you need to have a domain name for this project. OK, so in case you've not gotten one, you can actually get one for yourself. And in case you don't want to spend money, um, I think there are actually some free websites where you can you can get your domain name for free. Uh, one of them is Freenom. Right. So what, if you go to Freenom, you can actually see some um, you can actually get a domain name for yourself. Free one. And there are some others. Actually, um, I purchased mine at GoDaddy. So I'll be using the domain name to name my bucket. All right. So I will suggest you do same to avoid some confusion. So I have my domain name already. I'm just going to go ahead and type the name here. DevOps with Helen dot com so this is my domain name and um, this AWS region um, is what the one I'm gonna be using so you can choose any region you want to create your bucket in I'll just leave mine like this so I'll scroll down this SEO I'm not gonna touch anything here because this one is fine all objects in this bucket are owned by these accounts fine access to this bucket and its object is specified using only policies so I'm good with this I won't touch it and I will scroll down so when you're creating your Amazon S3 bucket by default it is private so if you choose to make it public you can actually uncheck this so i'll go ahead and uncheck it because i want it to be publicly accessible so so here i will just acknowledge it all right and i will scroll down that is all i won't touch any other thing i'll just leave them leave them the way they are and i'll click on create bucket and it's just a matter of seconds or oh, great so our bucket has been created and this is it here so I'll just click on it all right so right now the next thing we're gonna do is to upload our files so this is the time to upload your content your websites be it um, whether it's in a file or folder so this is where to click in order to upload them so I'll just click on upload uh, and it will take me to this page I will just click on add files so in case yours is in a folder you can actually select folder but I have it as a file all right so it will take you to the location it will take you to you know to a place where you can browse to the location of your content so these are actually my two files and I'll select the two and I'll click on open oh great so as you can see these are my files and if I scroll down I'll see upload option so I'll just click upload awesome so this has been uploaded and I'll just close this great so awesome so our files has been uploaded and the next thing I'm gonna do right now is to create a bucket policy why do we need to create a bucket policy a bucket policy is actually required so that we can um, give permission for these files to be assessed all right so right from this page where our files are I will just go to permissions and I'll click on it I'll scroll down to where we have bucket policy and I'm gonna click on 
edit. So I'll just paste my bucket policy here. All right. And in case you don't know how to create this bucket policy, you can actually make use of a policy generator. So to show you, I'll just click on this. Okay, first of all, let me duplicate this tab. All right, so you can just click on policy generator so you, can, so you can generate your policy and you can as well make use of AWS documentation. So once you come to this page, you can actually create or generate your policy or you can make use of AWS documentation for your policy. And I'm going to leave that on the description below so you can make use of that in case if you want to use AWS documentation. So going back to our page. Let me close this. All right. So if you're pasting your policy, be careful so you don't leave extra space here. All right. So if you leave any, any extra space or if you have any syntax error, um, it's, it's not going to allow you to save. All right. It will just prompt an error. Okay. So my bucket policy is there and here I'll just copy my bucket ARN, all right? I'll copy this bucket ARN and replace it with what I have here. So just under your resource, remove whatever you have here and paste the bucket ARN. Awesome, I've pasted mine. So whatever your bucket ARN is, just copy it and replace it here, all right? So ensure that you have slash asterisk here so it can actually see your files so i'll just scroll down and click on save awesome so if, if you see that i have publicly accessible displayed here so that means my content can be accessed publicly all right that is fine so the next thing i'm gonna show you is how to enable this static website hosting all right so there is a section in this property where you can enable the website hosting so I'm just gonna click on property in case you don't know how to locate here let me go back to the bucket so if you just click on your buckets here right from this place you can see your properties and just click on it so I'll scroll down to the last section. All right, as you can see, I have static website hosting here. So I'll just click on edit. All right, and I'll select enable. Scrolling down, I can see. Um, so here you're, you're required to specify the home or the default page of your website. So um, in case of mine, I have HTML, so I'm just going to give the name index.html. And in case you have your custom error page, you can actually include it here. So I have mine. I'll just type. Error.html. Great. So having done that, I'll just scroll down and click on save changes. Oh, great. So let's validate what we've done. So right here in this page, I will scroll down to get the URL of our bucket. So going to the browser, let's access this from the browser and see if I can access my website. Press enter. Great. As you can see, my website is here and ready. And this doesn't mean we are done with the project. It's just the starting point. All right. So if you look here, you can see that this website is not secured. And that is where AWS Certificate Manager will come into play. Right. So in, later in this project, we'll make use of Certificate Manager to enable us have a secured website. All right. So thank you for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.